one of the things that has been a, a concern to me even more so uh, recently is just the fact of, of uh, so many people that feel like they're Christians and I don't know you probably have friends and, and maybe relatives family that fall into that category and you know if you if you look at their lives you don't see any evidence of it and we have this in our own family personally in our own family and, and uh, relatives and things I can remember so many of our grandkids that came up to VBS and all claim to have accepted the Lord and yet they're not walking with with the Lord and my you know just because a person says raises their hand or prays a little prayer or something like this doesn't necessarily mean that they're Christian and yet you know there are a lot of people who look at that so I just wanted to spend some time this morning that uh, what doesn't make us a Christian things that people so often say you hear said and and uh, things that just doesn't make us a Christian just because we do these certain things now I've listed down a number of different ones and uh, I haven't put them in any special order I just jotted them down as they were coming to mind and and just I hope that uh, you have a better basis for your Christianity than what this is and we'll look at that a little bit later too but what doesn't make us a Christian baptism you know a lot of people say well I've been baptized so therefore I'm a Christian and I've had that told to me by some who have attended here in the past you know, baptism in other words what they're saying is I was baptized as a baby or a really super young child and as a result of that that makes me a Christian well I think you'll have great I, not I think I know you'll have great difficulty supporting that from Scripture because it takes more than just a baptism to to uh, enable a person to become a Christian one cult even teaches that you can be baptized to save for a uh, baptized for a dead relative so they'll be saved you know and it's pretty sad isn't it when they when they go to that extent and yet there are people who are falling for that but uh, Matthew 16 16 says he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved there's a believeth that comes in there that has to be done first you know uh, an infant has great difficulty in believing I think as far as accepting Christ not this, they're not going to be able to are they a person has to believe in their heart and trust in the Lord in order to be saved and baptism is certainly important and the Bible teaches that we need to be baptized but not for salvation so a person who says you know I've been baptized uh, if that's the only thing they're basing their salvation on you can be sure that they're they're not saved as far as God's Word is concerned what can wash away my sin the Bible says nothing but the blood of Jesus isn't that's the only thing baptism doesn't wash away our sin um, only the blood of Jesus can wash away our sin <clears throat> first Peter 1 18 and 19 and we're going to be jumping around here some and I've got a lot of material to cover so I'll see how it goes but 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19 <clears throat> says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your sinless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. It's because of what he did for us there on the cross that we can be saved not because of baptism baptism will never save a person how about good works Did you ever hear anybody say that you know I, I'm a good person I had a guy tell me here one time in the community says well you know we were talking to him about salvation and he says you know when I die I'll get on the scales and I see if the good outweighs the bad boy that's pretty pretty scary isn't it when you stop and think and, and look and, and try to base your salvation on good works uh, good works will never save a person no matter how good is there anything wrong with good works absolutely not there's nothing wrong with good works but just the fact that you're you're staking your eternal destiny because I'm a good person uh, is not going to save a person Isaiah 64 6 says all our righteousnesses are like filthy rags you know the the the, the good things that we do and there's nothing wrong with good things but when it comes to trying to say that I'm saved because I do good works 
uh, Jerry was going over this in Sunday school class this morning. You know, uh, people who talk about good works and in hopes of salvation. It just doesn't work according to Scripture. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 tells us, says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 10 goes on to say, For we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus unto good works. So there's nothing wrong with good works, but when it comes to salvation, they're not going to get you. You're not going to be saved because of good works no matter how good you are so baptism doesn't save us good works doesn't save us how about church attendance I attend church every Sunday all my life I I can remember back when we were growing up and uh, the church we happened to attend at that time had a whole string of pins that you could get little bars and and uh, you know you got a, a pin to start with and then if you only missed I think no more than two Sundays you got a bar for that year and I, the record that I saw one from a guy had 50 some bars had attended church without missing more than two Sundays a year is that gonna save a person not according to what God's Word says good church attendance is great and we need to attend church there's nothing wrong with that providing it's a church that teaches God's Word but uh, it's not going to save us our salvation is not based on good works <clears throat> some uh, there are some who like to say if you leave out leave our organization uh, or our church you might say you lose your salvation can you support that from scripture you know if you were to attend happy camp bible church and say i think i'm going to go to the assembly of god church or to the mall what well, we used to call it the mall church uh, happy camp christian fellowship now do you lose your salvation if you leave here no you don't do you Salvation is not based on what church you attend as far as as far as that part of it goes as long as it's a Bible believing church You can move from one denomination to another one church to another but Some say because you leave their organization you lose your salvation. You won't find that in scripture You can't support it <coughs> from there over in Hebrews <coughs> Excuse me Hebrews chapter 10 <coughs> Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 5 says, Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you, as you see the day approaching. Do you think if everyone who in happy camp said they were a christian would be here this morning our building would be full along with the other churches as well too you know it, the sad part of it is people are, are straying away from the church and church attendance is not what's going to save them but church attendance is important and i believe you know that people are, are straying away and uh, i don't need the church i can worship god any place and that's true how about prayer if I pray, will that save me? Well, if anything should, you'd think prayer should almost, shouldn't it? But one of the great dangers of Christianity is when one prays a prayer that someone else says for sal someone else says, pray this prayer after me, uh, you know, is not going to do, may not, I shouldn't say is not, may not do what they think it may do. You know, a, a person can say, pray this prayer after me, and a person who prays it with an honest heart I believe they're saved as a result of that but if they're just saying it to say words uh, you know there's got to be some evidence with any of these things if our salvation is real there has to be some evidence there we have to be able to others have to see Christ in us and that's what it's all about isn't it but prayer in itself doesn't uh, doesn't save us important and I hope we all pray uh, you know asking God for things and, and praising God for things it's not just a gimme and sometimes I think we use prayer for that don't we just gimme 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 God and uh, he's not a one guy said a uh, what do you call that Co convenience store or whatever it is uh, that's not the kind of God we have but we do need to pray and God is here's our prayers as long as there's not sin in our heart and if I regard iniquity in my heart the Lord will not hear me the Bible says in Psalm so it's it's important but 
prayer is, is really important, but will never save us as a result of just pray and prayer alone. How about generosity? Does one's generosity merit salvation? You know, again, I'm a good person. I give to the poor. I give to the needy. I give this and I give that and all these different things. Does that save a person? Not according to God's word, does it? It's not going to save someone because they're a good person who is a generous person. And there's nothing wrong with that either. Nothing wrong with any of these things. But as far as our salvation is concerned, it's, uh, you know, it's not going to account one iota as far as our salvation is concerned if we're basing our, our good things on that. Here's a kind of a capper for me in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 3. And you see if it, it uh, what, you, what you think of it. A person who says, well, you know, I'm a generous person and I give to the poor and I give all kinds of things. Gen uh, 1 Corinthians 3, the first part of that verse says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. You can go as far as to give your body to be burned, you know, uh, but if there's no love involved in there, then that's not going to profit you anything. What profits is our faith and our what we believe in God and, and uh, trust in Him, and, and but not certainly our generosity. Nothing wrong with generosity, but not for our salvation. How about religious inheritance? Uh, Mom and Dad were a Christian, so that makes me automatically a Christian. Or we're, we're born in a, in a Christian nation, and so that automatically makes me a Christian. That's not the way it works, is it? Not according to Scripture. And yet there are people who, who uh, put that forth as, well, I was born in America, that's a Christian nation, at least it used to be. But, uh, you know, that, that's not what saves a person. What country you're born in or, or religious inheritance, whether your mom and dad were Christians or not, or grandma and grandpa, uh, these things don't make a person a Christian. Acts chapter 7 and Acts chapter 8 clearly shows us that we're not saved by religious inheritance. Now, the Jews had that problem, didn't they? I'm a Jew, therefore God's got to accept me and I get to go to heaven because I'm a Jew. I'm one of God's loved, loved children and one of God's, one of his children. That's not what it says. It doesn't work that way. There's going to be a multitude of Jews who are not going to be in heaven, who are going to spend eternity uh, apart from heaven in hell. But uh, just because they think they're a Jew and got it made because of that, because of their nationality, uh, is not going to work as far as God is concerned. Their religious inheritance <coughs> is not going to make a difference. Uh, this one here should help, though. How about Bible reading? Reading your Bible, is that going to save you? Not in and of itself. Now, I realize that the, the Bible tells us, uh, Romans 10, 17, I believe it is, uh, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And so it certainly can help in that direction, but just because you read your Bible doesn't mean you've got it made and you, you're guaranteed a spot in heaven because I read my Bible. You know, as I understand, the Jewish people, you know, prior to the Christ coming to earth, uh, were taught in the Old Testament. And they knew that. And the Apostle Paul was one of those, uh, as Saul, uh, you know, knew the Old Testament and, and the, well, probably could quote mostly. If I'm not mistaken, I think the young Jewish boys have to learn a tremendous amount of scripture. But what good does it do them if it's not applied to the heart? And like a guy told me one time when I used to sell papers at Boeing's, don't take it to heart. Well, you have to take it to heart, don't you? If, if it's going to do you any good, you have to take it to heart. Bible reading is great as long as you take it to heart. And, and do what it says. How about religious icons? And this one here I thought was quite interesting. Uh, I talked to a, a pastor friend of mine one time and someone told him and he told me, so I don't know this, I'm assuming what he said is true. I have a, a, a plaque hanging on my wall. So therefore that makes me a Christian. You know, my mom and dad had plaques on their wall, and you probably had plaques, and your mom and dad probably did as well, too. And, and uh, But does that make us a Christian? No, it doesn't, does it? 
you know these kids that came to vacation Bible school and they paint these plaques and that's one of the things they really like to do is paint plaques but does that make them a Christian just because they have a plaque hanging on the wall not not it by any stretch of the imagination but uh, a person is saved according to God's Word not according to having something hanging on the wall or not hanging on the wall uh, Here's one that I've heard often, and you probably have heard it too. I've always been a Christian. All my life I've been a Christian. you probably heard that before from different people. Well, uh, I don't know how that can be, that you can be a Christian before you came to the understand what Christianity was about and you put your faith in what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. Prior to that time, you're not a Christian, according to what Scripture says. We're born in iniquity, Psalm 51 says, and, uh, and in sin did my mother conceive me. We're born in sin. We're sinners. The Bible tells us all of sin that comes short of the glory of God. And so to say I've always been a Christian, which I've heard numerous times, and I suspect you probably have heard as well too, just simply isn't true. There has to come a point in time in your life when you, when you recognize the fact that you're lost, that you are a sinner, and that you trust in the work that Christ did for you, for us on the cross. And then that what makes, that's what makes a difference like it or not we're all born sinners just like God's Word says we don't automatically become a Christian just because uh, we're any of these other things and we haven't always been a Christian there comes that point in time when we have to realize that we're lost realize that we're heading for hell and that our only hope is in Christ and what he did for us on the cross how about this one God loves everybody well that would be good shouldn't it and all roads lead to heaven. You ever heard that one? All roads lead to heaven. That doesn't make you a Christian. God loves you, absolutely. The Bible tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died on the cross for us. He loves us. And uh, he became the propitiation for our sins, not only ours, but for the sins of the whole world. And just the fact that God does love us, that's a true statement. God does love, whether you're saved or whether you're not saved, God still loves you. When did he love you? Before you ever became a Christian. And yet to say, well, because God loves everybody, uh, I'm going to get, to go to get to go to heaven as a result of that. Over in Revelation chapter 20, Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15, has a little more to say about that. It says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, whose name, uh, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place them and I saw the dead small and great uh, standing before God and the books were open and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged according to the works by the things which are written in the books the sea gave up the dead who were in it uh, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them and they were judged each one according to his works then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death Anyone who was not found uh, written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You see, God loves everybody, but if we're not in that Lamb's book of life, then we're not going to heaven. It's as simple as that. And it says here, are going to be cast into the lake of fire. You know, I, I understand that hell is going to be absolute blackness. And last night when the power was out, I don't know if you guys were awake during that time or not, but we were, at least I was anyhow. And, uh, you know, I just, without looking out the window, because it was kind of kind of light if you looked out the window, but just looking in the room, total blackness. You know, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face or anything else. Imagine spending eternity in a place like that. That's just absolute total blackness. Uh-huh. And you, and you rejected it. You had the choice, you can make it, and probably multiple times that you could make that choice, and you, you end up rejecting it and spending eternity. What a, what a horrible, horrible thing. But that's what's going to happen to so many people who have not accepted Christ as their Savior and the work that he did on a cross. It's not a place that I want to spend eternity. I know that for sure. There are other things that aren't mentioned, you know, about hell and what it's going to be like, but it's not a place that I want to spend eternity with. How about all roads lead to heaven? If that's true, then we'll all be there. 
You know, I've had this told to me too. You know, all roads lead to heaven. But you know, it's simply not true. There's only one road that leads to heaven. And we find that in John chapter 6, uh, or chapter 14, verse 6, I mean, where it says, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If you want to go to heaven, you're going to have to go through the cross and what Jesus did for you there on the cross. And by personally accepting that, I can't accept that for you. You can't accept it for me or anybody else. That's something that we have to do personally ourselves. We have to make that choice. But uh, there's only one road that leads to heaven. And you know where that road goes? It goes through the cross. There's a picture back there. I think Gloria maybe have drawn that for us uh, back there on that as you go out the door. And it's a picture of a great divide. You remember that, talking about that in the Bible in, in Luke chapter 15, I believe it is, talking about that great divide. And the cross spans that great divide. And unless you've come to the cross and gone by way of the cross, you're not going to be in heaven no matter what kind of a person you are. If all the above things don't make us a Christian, then what does? You know, if, if being this good type person and all these things doesn't make us a Christian, what does? Well, I've just jotted down four things that I had written down here. First, we need to recognize and confess that we're sinners. Romans 3, 20, see, all of sin and come short of the glory of God. We have to recognize, we have to admit that. And sometimes that's not always easy to do, isn't it? You know, we don't want people to think we're sinners, bad people. But according to scripture, we have to recognize and confess that we are sinners. And second, we have to repent of our sins. Acts chapter 39 I think it's actually chapter 3, verse 9. It's what it's supposed to be, I believe. But uh, anyway, well, let me just take a quick look and make sure. Uh, 319. 319, okay. Uh, you know, one of the things that my computer doesn't do is type like I think in my head. And uh, so I have some problems with that sometimes. It's just, just uncontrollable. And, it, and, you know, it's... Anyway, what does 319 say? Do you have it there, Terry? Okay. Okay, thanks, Jay. Repent and be converted. That your sins will be blotted, blotted out. We have to accept the work that our... We have to have our... Repent of our sins. And... Uh, as a result of that, do you think God's going to say, well, you know, I know you're repenting, but I don't care. I don't like you. And so, therefore, I'm not going to let you come into heaven. That's not the case at all, is it? He died for everyone, no matter who. You know, if Hitler, I'm, I'm using him as an example, but if he would have repented, do you think God would accept him? How about Judas Iscariot? Do you think God would have accepted him if he would have repented? You know, I believe he would have. And... Uh, you know, there's a, a job that he had to do, and he didn't, and God knew that. But, you know, it doesn't matter what you've done, what a person's done in their life. God will forgive if we repent and, and be sorry for it. And then, uh, third, we have to, by faith, accept the work that Jesus did for us on the cross. Uh, first, or John 1.12 says, But as many as received them, him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name accept the work that he did there for us on the cross and forth we have to die to self galatians 2 20 i've been crucified with christ it is no longer i who live but christ lives in me and it goes on there a little bit more talking about living in the flesh but you know just the fact that we have to die to self paul said three di three different times the apostle paul said three different times i die daily and you know it's so important isn't it if we don't do that and you say well how can I do that I, I can't commit suicide or you know I'm not going to but just the fact that we we are sorry for our sins and we're dying basically dying to self and allowing God to come and work in our lives and that's what we want and that's what he'll do there are no evidences if there's no evidences of a changed life one can easily question the validity of the person's salvation you know, it's pretty sad, isn't it? But we need to keep a check and see how we're doing. Is our life producing fruits of the Spirit? I think I heard that mentioned this morning, fruits of the Spirit. You know, if our life is not producing that, then as a, we get them as a gift from the Holy Spirit, then we need to, to check and see if we really are a Christian or not. 
And I think there are other signs and things that we could put in there too, but for sake of time, obviously we can't. But I trust this morning you know how you're saved. So if someone would ask you how you were saved, you wouldn't say, well, I'm a good person, or I go to church, or I read my Bible, or I was baptized as a kid, or some of these other things that people say. But you can say, I know I'm saved because of the blood of Christ and what he did for me there on the cross. That's my only hope. And, you know, this old saying of Peter, you're going to stand before Peter and say, why should I let you into heaven? It's not going to happen. Either you go there or you don't go there. And you don't go there based on what, whether Peter lets you in or not. You go there based on what Christ did for you there on the cross. So does it make a difference if I accept the work that Jesus Christ did for me on the cross? Absolutely. Your name, if it's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, simply you won't be in heaven according to what Scripture tells us. Romans 8 16 and 1 John 5 13 both tell us that we can know without any doubt whether we're saved or not Do you know that this morning? Do you know without any doubt whether you're saved or not? Boy if you have doubt you want to you want to uh, Investigate further don't you whether you're actually saved or not saved and there's nothing wrong with saying you know I'm not saved. I want to be But I'm not I'd like to be but I'm not can you help me? And I'm sure that we can help you in that area. But just the fact that we, we can know the Bible gives us absolute clearance. We don't have to wait until we die and step on the scales, so to speak, and see if the good outweighs the bad. But we can know right now whether we're saved or not. You can know right now whether you're saved or not. And I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to, to you saying, yes, I am. No, I'm not. One or the other. And uh, if he's saying to you, no, you're not, then I would just pray that you would make that decision and uh, come to know him you know it's very sad but there are many when god holds mankind accountable for how he or she lived here on this earth they'll seek to use the things we talked about as reasons why god should accept them but they're not going to hold water with god he's not going to say well you have been a good person so i don't know maybe we can make room for for you it's not going to happen your entire destiny never knew you absolutely even though they did good things what we did all these things we we went to fed you and clothed you and gave you food to, or water and all these different things but he said depart from me i never knew you yeah uh how sad but your entire eternal destiny hangs on not on who you are or what you are or what you've done but on what jesus did for you that's what your whole entire destiny hangs on onto and uh, you know unless you've claimed that for yourself personally then the scripture teaches that you're simply not going to heaven and if that's the case if you were to step out of here today and die where would you spend eternity you know Virginia's stepdad was in church regularly and uh, nobody he had no idea that he was going to be gone that before the next Sunday came I don't know do you know do you know absolutely for sure that you're going to be here next Sunday or, or have that a possibility of being here? None of us know, do we? But that's a possibility. Anyhow, I just challenge you in these areas to think about this and uh, consider what Jesus did for you and to accept that as, uh, boy, what a blessing, what an encouragement. And I realize that even though we've accepted the work that Christ did for us on the cross, we're still not perfect. Even though the Bible wants us to be perfect, we're still not. And, uh, but there's room for forgiveness. And that's what's the neat part about it. Even though I've sinned, there's still room for, for forgiveness. And I don't care what kind of sin you've done. You say, well, I've done this or I've done that. Look at the apostle. Well, look at Saul when he was on, uh, prior to his road to Damascus. He was a very religious guy did what he thought God wanted him to do and he was going around persecuting and seeing that Christians were killed and all sorts of things uh, no doubt a good person but didn't meet the requirements for what we have to have to get to heaven and eventually obviously he did and he went on to preach about that and teach about that as well too but so I just I just as we think of communion this morning and we think of what God the son did for us there on the cross uh, what a what a blessing and without that we're lost eternally lost 
But with that, we're eternally saved. And I believe once a person's saved, they're saved. And you don't have to, you won't lose your salvation based on what you did, which doesn't give us a license to do whatever we want. But nonetheless, just consider what he did for you. The body that was broken or given for you, the blood that was shed for us, uh, well, we'd be spending eternity apart from him in hell if that hadn't been, if we don't accept the work that he did. So I'm going to have Terry and, and Jerry come.